Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Bacall and I work for the Harris County Public Library Systems in their programs, partnerships, and outreach division. And today we're excited to share with you an original play, a new version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And this play is going to be put on by the iACT Theater Group. Um, it's usually done in an interactive setting. And because of um, COVID and the changes we've all had in our lifestyle this past year, they wrote it in a way that none of the actors were ever actually in the same room. So this show will feature four actors who never actually were in the same room together. Please think of questions that you might have while you're watching. And at the end of the program, I will be introducing a gentleman who works with the uh, theater company and he'll be talking to us about this show and any other shows and any questions that you have about theater at all. So with no further ado, please welcome the screening of Goldilocks and the Three Bears by I Act Theater. Greetings. Before the curtain is drawn on our story, I want to let you know that it makes me a little sad that we cannot be together. Actors on stage, audience in the seat, laughing and enjoying a play. Nothing warms the heart of an actor more than the laughter and applause of an audience. Yet today we meet again on a screen. Even though we cannot be together, this is not a new thing. For you see, years and years ago, children in the country could not get to the theater. And so they would construct tabletop theaters. They would read their stories and act them out with as many characters as they could draw and cut out of paper. We were inspired by this, and so the three stories you're about to witness will be played on a tabletop theater. Of course, first you must meet the actors. I love telling stories. My mama taught me it's wrong to tell stories and lies. Not those kind of stories, Archie. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Uh, oh, oh, I, I thought of a joke. Let's hear it. I, I don't tell jokes good. You don't tell jokes well. Exactly. Tell it anyway. Okay, okay. Why did the chicken want to get to the other side of the road? Wait, I, I, I didn't finish my joke. Yes, you did. I could read this month's issue of the Super Bat Force versus the Cootie Monster. The only story I know is one I learned as a baby. Let's hear it. It was about this egghead that fell down and cracked open like an egg. Humpty Dumpty. What did you call me? Uh, Humpty Dumpty said ashes, ashes, and then fell down. That's Hickory Dickory Doc. No, Hickory Dickory has the mouse run up the clock. London bridges are falling down. Humpty Dumpty has all the king's horses and all the king's men try to put him back together again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he ran into the clock because he couldn't see. Who? The mouse. You're thinking about the three blind mice? Three blind mice. See how they run? See how they run. They all ran up to the farmer's wife. Who cut off their tails with a carving knife. Have you ever, ever seen, seen such, such a sight, sight in your life in your as... Life? To get to the other side? Three blind mice. Actually, they were only blind because they super glued their eyebrows to their lips. See how they run. Actually, they drove little toy cars with rubber band engines. See how they drove little cars with rubber band engines. They all ran. Actually, they drove. Drove up to the farmers. Actually, he was hiding out as an ostrich rancher because he was really a jewel thief. Wife? That part's right. She was his wife. Who, who cut off their tails? Actually, she shaved off their tails, but later they fell off because of embarrassment. With a carving knife? Actually, it was a sword that once belonged to Emperor Mitsubishi from the Ping Pong Dynasty. Have you ever seen such a sight in your life as three blind mice who had super glued their, their eyebrows to their lips? lips? I like that joke, especially the part about the little rubber band cars. Strike three, not a joke. It was a nursery rhyme. I'm a good 
good storyteller who wants to hear me tell a story. Well... Once upon a time... Nope. 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 How about... In a world where dinosaurs still roam the land, they were battling with robots that were three stories tall that shot fire. We're listening. There was a princess named Rapunzel. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. She was princess of Pirate Land because she had beaten all the other girls away from the island with the shin bone of a gorilla. Cool. One day, a handsome prince spied her and she fell in love. Handsome prince? He's so handsome. Someday my prince will come. Oh, I'm gonna hurl. Yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. Why do they always have to ruin everything being lovey dovey? Meh. Stop. Who said that? You cannot leave. Why not? I am the narrator, and you have not finished the story. Every story must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes, yes sir. sir. And because I said so. Yes, yes sir. sir. And they lived happily ever after the end. There now, was that so painful? No. Would you like to tell another story? No, 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 thank you. Nope. Yes. Who said yes? Excellent. Let's begin. Once upon the time. I could tell the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. <sighs> Casey at bat. No, I'll tell the one about the bed that hadn't been made up yet. This might sound crazy, but there is one of me and three of you. Why don't we tell the story of the three... Ghosts. The three... Goats. The three... Pigs. Bears. Once upon a time, there were three bears. So what happened next? Well, at the beginning of the story, Papa, Mama, and Baby Bear are eating breakfast. I want to be, be Papa bear. bear. Can't we all be Papa Bear? We can't all be Papa Bear. That would disrupt the space-time continuum, silly. Yeah. What he said. Why don't we paper, rock, scissors for it? We should draw names. Stop! We'll pick a number between one and ten. Trey? One through ten? That's two numbers. Disqualified. Pi. That's food. It's also a number. 3.14159265. That's nine numbers. Disqualified. Looks like I'm gonna be Papa Bear. But <laughs> who's Baby Bear? You can be Baby Bear. Cool. <laughs> Well, that leaves a mama bear. I can be baby bear. A mama bear, baby is crying and needs his breakfast. And so begins our first story, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Morning, Papa Bear. Morning, baby bear. Mama Bear, what's for breakfast? I see who's at the door, baby bear. It's the delivery bear. Who's hungry? We can't let our neighborhood animals go hungry, can we? No. no. <laughs> that smells delicious. What is it? I am Meats on Feet. We are a caring organization that delivers meats and meat substitutes to hibernation-bound animals. Because we care so much, we carry everything to you ourselves. Thus the name, Meat on Feet. Mm -hmm. I'm so hungry, my mouth's growling. Let's dig in. <laughs> Can you pass the honey? Stop right there. Uh, but we're hungry. That is not how the story goes. Where is Mama Bear? She's visiting a sick aunt in Kodiak, Alaska, and Kent. And who are you supposed to be? Baby Bear. Papa Bear. I'm with Meats on Feet. 
an organization that delivers meat and meat substitutes to hibernation-bound animals. He's a care bear. Once there were three bears. Papa bear, mama bear, and baby bear. Fine, here eat your gruel. The bears ate their porridge, but it was too hot. Ow! I burned my tongue! It hurts! <laughs> <laughs> I burn my tongue and my mouth is on fire. <laughs> no, it's terrible. I can't taste it because you melt in my taste buds. It feels like I ate a porcupine. <laughs> Please, now finish up before it gets cold. <laughs> let's, let's go outside and get a cool cold drink from the creek. That's a good idea, Papa Bear. And so the three bears headed out for a nature walk. Then along came a little girl, whose hair was as yellow as the sun. Her name was... Tiffany! But everyone called her... Goldilocks. Ta-da! Ooh, what's that smell? Porridge? I am so, so hungry from my long walk through the woods that I shall take a repast here in this humble little home. And so, Goldilocks took a taste of Papa Bear's porridge. Ow! It's too hot! No, really, it's really, really hot. I, I think I burned a hole in my throat. Uh, I need something cold. So Goldilocks tried Mama Bear's porridge. That's right. Ah! It's too cold! Wait! I object. How is it too cold? Wasn't it just flaming hot? How is Papa's too hot still and Mama's too cold? It's not possible. Maybe something made it cold. Tell us something that makes things cold. Something freezing cold. Brr. <laughs> Ice? Okay. Perhaps they're polar bears, and it's so cold. But this porridge here is just right, and- I object! How is it possible that Papa's porridge is still a pyre, Mama Mush is mellow, what are the odds that Baby's Bowl is bountiful and best? Say that three times fast. Let the jury observe that there is no evidence to support Baby Bear's bowl being... Can I have Goldilocks last words read to the court? This porridge is just right. It seems that we need something tasty. What is something that tastes good? Pickles! There, you have it. Chocolate pickles. Papa's porridge is too hot and Mama's porridge is too cold. But if I add some chocolate pickles... Mmm, this is delicious. Objection! The porridge sounds too good. This is scrumptious? Your Honor! Fine. It's just right. I rest my case. <laughs> Who are you? The bear rister? <laughs> and so, finding that the porridge was just right, Goldilocks ate it. She ate it all up. Next, Goldilocks went into the bear's den. tra -la, la What a cozy room this is. I'll just take a seat on one of these, uh, chairs. And so Goldilocks sat in the first chair. Uh, what are you doing? There aren't any chairs to sit on. No chairs. Goldilocks has to have something to sit on. It's part of the story. No chairs! The middle part of the story sets up everything for the big finish. If we don't find something for Goldilocks to sit on, then we'll never finish the story. And if we never finish the story, we'll be stuck as bears forever. Quiet, you baby. Fine. If it'll get things moving, we can play the chairs ourselves. We are so gonna get cooties from this. Ow! This chair isn't comfortable at all. Why, it's made of granite. 
I'll just sit on the next chair. Ooh, it's a massage chair with a musical headrest and automatic popcorn dispenser. It's a lazy bear. How long do we have to stand like this? Until the chair breaks. So break already. I'm not gonna break. I'm not gonna break. You break! Why should I break first? I break, but I can't feel my arms. Ow! Ow! Ah, uh, uh, ooh, ooh. I can feel my arms again. Look at this little room full of beds. What are we gonna do for beds? How about a chair? Do it. So, Goldilocks laid down in Papa Bear's bed. Ow! This bed is too hard. Why is the furniture in this house so uncomfortable? Quick, kick the bed with me. Ooh, and it's kicky too. I, I can't take a nap here. So Goldilocks laid down in Mama Bear's bed. <sighs> this is so soft. It's, it's a waterbed. Gently now, let's rock the bed. Oh dear, I think I'm gonna lose my porridge. I need to find somewhere else to take a nap. Ooh. Oh, I'll cover with a blanket and, and I'll sing a lullaby. Oh, and well, let me get my pillow. Go to sleep, little Bo Peep, and don't worry about your sheep. Mmm, my, something smells like honey. Oh, I better wake up and go home before whoever owns the home finds me. I, I, I can't seem to move. There's something sticky on my pillow. Sticky honey. Oh my, there's sticky honey on this pillow and I can't seem to get free. Ah, why do I hear buzzing? My pillow is full of buzzing things. Oh no, my pillow is a beehive. If I move too much, the bees will get angry and sting me. I must lie still. Just then, the bears arrived home. Well, someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge and they ate it all up. Oh, oh. oh dearie, 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 someone's home. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sitting in my chair and they broke it all up. Oh, 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 oh. I'll just have to break free without making the bees angry. No, no, no. Well, baby bear, I think someone has been sleeping in my bed. How do you know that, Papa Bear? Because it's not where I left it. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, too. <gasps> oh, my bed's fine. Is there, uh, anything wrong with it? Yep, it's still there. Maybe you better check again, baby bear. I'll check. What do, you, what do you think, baby bear? One bed, one blankie, one pillow. Everything's there. Seems a little lumpy. Seems a little shaky. You don't suppose someone was sleeping in your bed and, uh, and they're still there, do you? Oh, MG, there's someone still sleeping in my bed and she's still there. Ah, uh, look, there's some sort of misunderstanding. Please don't eat me. Do you taste like sin? Nope, she tastes like honey. I'm not making any promises. Can you help me get this thing off my head? Is that a beehive stuck to your head? Oh, well, that's my pillow. It just happens to be a hive. Oh, beehive. Oh, sure, it's stuck. Oh, oh. I, I need some help, Papa Bear. Uh, help me out. Oh. Yeah. Uh. Woo! Oh. <laughs> the bees angry quick everyone out the window that's it we're going home no little girl's gonna keep me from my porridge oh.
Oh, yes, I forgot all about breakfast. Can I get some porridge? As the little girl ate all my porridge, and um, I'm hungry. No! This is the end of the story of the three bears, isn't it? I need help to get this sticky stuff off my head. Boys, is that you? Where are you? I need help. Which way do they go? Which way do they go? There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. In a nearby wood, Mama Bear and her three cubs made their home. Hey, Ma, I'm home from the market. Uh, they were all sold out of roast beef, so I didn't get none. Ma? Uh, I knew I should have stayed home. Wee. Ma, I made it home from football practice. Ma, 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 I'm home from the blanket store. New blankets. This pig won't have to live through another sleepless night in a cold bed. Yes, we'll be all toasty and warm as a person sleeping in a warm bed. <laughs> What's wrong, Wee Wee? <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. I have nightmares. He's been dreaming about the BBW. The B I G B A D W O L F. Yes, the big bad wolf. I can spell, you know. Don't worry, Wee Wee. The big bad wolf won't eat you. He only eats fat piggies who look like Wee Wee. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> I think his big badness is coming to get you! Wee oui, wee! Oui. Ow! <laughs> Stop it, you guys! I mean it! Boys? Boys, is that you? Where are you? I need your help. Ma's home and you two are gonna get it when she hears how you've been talking about the big, the big, the big, the big, the big, he's the big, he's the big, the big, the big bad wolf. Wee wee. Ran. All the way from home. Maybe we should go after him. What if he really runs into... The big... 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 Big bad wolf! Big bad wolf. Would you listen to yourself? That's just the nursery rhyme. There's no such thing as the big, 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 big bad wolf. Boys, boys, don't run away. Oh, where are you? I need your help. Which way do they go? Which way do they go? There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. I need some help. I gotta build somewhere to live because I'm trying to make myself safe from the big bad you know who. Look, all I got here is this whole basket full of straw. What should I build first? The door, the windows, the roof? What should I do? Hmm? Oh, that's a good idea. All right, so I'm going to take some straw, and I'm just going to hold it like this, and put them like that, and hold it together, and now let go of that. And, oh, it fell apart. Hey, 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 what's good at, at holding straw together? Uh, something sticky. Anybody? Any something sticky? What is something sticky? Chewing gum. Hmm. All right, everyone, reach into your invisible pocket and pull out a wad of chewing gum. Take the wrapper off, and then... Oh, are we chewing? Are we chewing? Is everybody chewing? I Okay, you back there, you're not chewing, okay? So I need to see you chewing. Like this. Chew. Well, put it in your mouth. Okay. All right. 
Now we're gonna boom, pop it out. Now everybody just throw your chewing gum up here. Okay, now I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna take it and stick it on the straw and then it'll all stick together better. <laughs> That'll be great. Hey, thanks for your help. You've been great. No, no, wait here. Cause my brother, he's building a house of sticks. He's gonna need your help, okay? Okay. I need help building a house for me to live in and be safe from the big bad wolf of bubble teeth. Yeah. Okay, so uh so you see I had this bundle of sticks. What part of the house should we build first? Well, you're wrong. <clears throat> first, we build the front door. <laughs> All right now, yeah. First you take this stick and uh I'll go get some more sticks and uh and then we'll hold them together. Look, I got sticks right here. See that? Sticks built kind of like a door. Uh -huh. uh, now we let go. Hey, who knocked down my house? What is good at holding things together? Something something strong. All right, we need something strong. Uh -huh. What's something strong that would help the stick stick together? Gravitational force. The force? Whoa. I will hold my house of sticks together by force. Now, I'm gonna build a house. I need help building a house for me to live in and be safe from the big bad Canis Lupus. Okay, so I have this barrel of bricks. What part of the house should we build first? Nice guess, but wrong. Uh, first, we build a strong foundation. Next, we lay the bricks on the foundation and I'll put mortar to hold the bricks together. After the foundation dries, I can build strong walls. After working long and well, I like to relax with a cool beverage. Splendid! Let us toast a job well done. Cheers! Now, ready for the middle of the story? Excuse me, can I get some help here? I have been trying to get this hive off my head and I think it's stuck. Mr. Voice, where am I? What story am I in? The big bad wolf? Where? Oh, it's bad enough to be chased by three bears, but then to be eaten by a wolf? I know. I can use my magical pixie sword of crystal to smite the wolf down and turn him into a daffodil. Or maybe I'll just knock on the door of this cute little house and hide? Hello? Is anyone home? The wolf is getting closer. Oh no, where's the straw house? Could you let me in please? There's a big bad wolf out there and if so, you don't let me in then I'm going to be eaten. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Please, must go. Wolves, scary, let me in. I said not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Is that my friend Trey? Trey, it's me, Goldilocks. Goldilocks? <laughs> Why didn't you say? <gasps> Go. <laughs> the big bad wolf. The big bad wolf. <laughs> Where? Where? Oh, there he is. Goodbye, cruel world. Alas, I never knew thee. That's no wolf. That's me. Those bears pretending to be piggies, huh? Don't you know it's in Don't you know it's criminal to Don't you know it's criminal to impersonate a piggy? I'll show them. Hey piggy. I know you're in there. So why don't you let me in? Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Fine then. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. A hairdryer?
<laughs> My house, it's been destroyed. I gotta run. Ah! Oh, now they're gonna get it. No one gets away from big, bad Goldilocks. Welcome to the house of sticks. We serve sticks of all varieties. Walking sticks, pickup sticks, stickers, chapsticks, uh, yeah, stickamaroos, um, sticky tacks, uh, sticks the band, if you like uh, classic rock. I don't know. Hello, piggy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big bad wolf! Little pigs, little pigs, you know you cannot win. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Little pigs, little pigs, I say to you again. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in! Not hair, chinny, chin. Not by the hair of our chinny, chin, chins. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Folks, you gotta help me out here. I can't blow houses down by myself. And I don't have any more hair dryers. So, what can be used to knock down something made of wood? <gasps> Quick, Wee Wee, go on without me. Run to our brother's house of bricks and save yourself. I'm not leaving you behind to be turned to bacon. Take that, you big bad wolf. Whoop, pap. Ooh, sorry. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Ooh. Ooh, sorry. Take that. Ow, ow. I don't mean to interrupt, but you boys shouldn't fight each other like that. What do you care? You're just going to eat us with a side of toast. Might as well go down fighting. Guys, I'm not the big bad wolf. Who are you? It's me, Goldilocks. Ah, Cody's run for your life. <gasps> Cody's ah, run for your lives. That does it. Those piggies are sausage. Little pigs, little pigs, open this door right now or it's huff and puff and homelessness for you three piggies. Oh, bother. Na, 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 na. Think you can hide from me in a brick house? It's my to my pay. Just chilling in here. Hanging out. Let me in. Let me in. Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll get help from the audience. <laughs> Not the third graders! <sighs> Guys, you gotta help me out here. What can you use to break something that's really, really, really strong? A feather? A balloon? A bulldozer. What do we do? She's coming with a bulldozer. A bulldozer? <laughs> do you have a license to operate this vehicle? After all, it is a school zone. It is? Yes. Just look out at the audience See, School zone. I'm afraid you're going to have to come with me. Are you here for bulldozer licensing? Yes? Okay, just stand right here for your photo. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes! A trap is sprung and Goldilocks falls into a pit. Let me out you, you pigs! Not by the hair of our chinny-chin-chins. Not by the hair of our chinny-chin-chins. Liggly split, brothers. Let us take the bricks from my house and trap the wolf below.
That way we'll never, never be afraid of the big bad wolf again. Hand me those bricks. That's the ticket. Now, let us go out into the world and seek our fortunes. I'm going to get a job in cartoons. That's all, folks. I'm going to invest in pork futures. I'm going home to Ma, all the way home. Wee 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 wee. Once upon a time, there was a little goat. We'll call him Billy Goat. That's me. He loved to graze in the fields. I love to graze on leaves and flowers and grass. Gazing while grazing across the bridge, Billy saw a luscious field filled with green, green grass. Oh, how he longed to dine in that field. Look it! Be gushing, be goring. That field over yonder is a veritable salad bar. Oh, I'll just cross over yonder drawbridge and get down. And so the little billy goat started to cross the bridge. Hello there, baby bear, or wee wee, or whatever they call you. Hello there, but my name's Billy Goat McGruff. I live on a farm just over the bluff. I like to eat plants and grass and stuff, and wipe my mouth with a handkerchief. I'm gonna get you, goat. Why are ye under that bridge, you grumpy Gus? Look here, I'm really Goldilocks. Oh, you ate Goldilocks? Oh, you're a nasty troll, you are. You stuck a beehive on my head and threw me into this hole, you, you silly toad. Oh no, McRibbit, McRibbit. Oh no, she's turned me into a toad, McRibbit, McRibbit. Ah, McRibbit, <laughs> McRibbit. He is so scared he believes anything you say is true. McRibbit. You are McRibbit. an ostrich. You are a spider monkey. You are a giraffe. Oh, oh, I'm getting taller. Oh, I cannot take no more. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Oh, please stop. You do not want to eat me. I'm just a wee little giraffe. Uh, but my brother the goat is coming in and he's far bigger and tastier than me. If he's bigger, how am I to defeat him? Turn me back into a goat and I'll tell ye. Tell me first, then I'll turn you back. His name is Sir William, and I cannot see without his spectacles. Fine, you're a goat. Now get. <coughs> oh! <coughs> As Billy ran off, Sir William came trotting down the path. Oh, yonder I spy with my roaming eye a field filled with heather and rye. Oh, my. By and by, this bridge I'll try and fill my sides with heather and rye. Not if I can help it. Oh, thou foul beast! I am a beastie far smarter than ye, than, than you. There are none more brilliant than I. I challenge you to a battle of wits. Bring it on. Math, one plus one. Two. Four times four. Sixteen. Two plus three. Five. Easy. Six minus seven. Um, does seven fit into six? Negative one. You win that round. But there's more. Spelling. Can you spell cat? C-A-T. Spell feline. F-E-L-I-N-E? Correct. Spell chalk. C H A L K. Spell education. E D C U T I O N. You lose, I win! Tongue twisters. How much wood? Would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well said. She sells. She shells, but she sure. Uh, stop, stop spitting. Was I spitting? I'm sorry. Here, have a tissue for your glasses. Quit spitting. Uh.
I don't understand why ye challenge me to a battle of wits. Your questions are too easy. Your answers are queasy, and you, my dear, are cheesy. One last contest, then. I spy. I spy something green. I'll have to put my glasses back on, and... Where are my spectacles? I can't see! It's... it's uh, I give up! What is it? It rhymes with green oat treating goal. A green goat eating troll? Help me! I cannot see without my glasses! Hide me, save me! I know. Eat my brother, goat. He's coming next. He's uh, bigger and tastier than me. If he's bigger, how am I going to defeat him? Give me back my spectacles and I'll tell ye. Tell me first, then I'll give them to ye. You. He goes by his initials, BGG, and he's allergic. To what? Grass? Cats? Peanuts? Cooties. Cooties? Yes. Fine. Here's your glasses. Take them and be gone with ye. You. So the troll deluxe returned Sir William his glasses. As along came the last Billy Goat oh, well. Gruff. I looked in the cupboard, I looked in the fridge, I climbed up the higher fridge. I asked me a lassie where I could find grass, she told me it was over yonder troll ridge. You don't look so tough. Do you dare challenge me, you cooty troll clan? Me cooty full of cooties! I do. Biggest goat of the clan, McGuff. I suppose you done eat my brother's gruff. Aye. I will. Then say your prayers for your bad team eat your maker. Take that. Ah, no. It is the one thing on earth that I fear. The dreadful cootie clan of the McCooties. <laughs> Nay, you have defeated me. I'm done for. Remember trolls everywhere. <sighs> these, <sighs> these goats may take your bridges and fields of grass, but they'll never take your freedom. Stop, stop, stop. What? This is not how the story ends. The last goat is supposed to knock the troll with his giant horns, and the goat gets the... I don't like that ending. Well, that's the way it always ends. Then why do we have to tell a story that everybody knows? Why can't we tell a new story? Well, you can. As long as the new story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. How do we begin the story? Characters! Dearest viewers, we actors have told our parts in the stories three. But now it's time for you to shine. What kind of story can you create about a girl named Goldilocks? Or Alice. Or Jill. Or Wanda Jean. Who traveled through the wood. Through space. Through the underworld. Through a cloud. And can you and the audience think of a character she might meet? Yes, like, like pirates. Or monsters. Insects. Or monsters. Or a unicorn. Gross. A unicorn who breathes fire. Cool. <laughs> well, we have come to the end of our three stories. And maybe a new story which you will create will be the subject of our next play. We look forward to seeing you on the stage or on screen or in your imagination. Hi, I hope you enjoyed watching that special play from the IAC Theater. I would now like to int introduce you to one of the performers that you saw in the show. Um, he's going to tell us a bit more about the theater troupe themselves, as well as this play specifically. And let me introduce to you Rob Brunson. Hello. Rob, did I say your name correctly? Yes, yes, you did. You did. Perfect. <laughs> 
Um, so let me start by asking you about your theater troupe and how you got together and um, how long you've been doing it. Well, I, uh, I started theater myself when I was in fourth grade. Um, it was very fun because I was very shy. And so mm -hmm. uh, when I first started doing theater, I didn't want to, but then I found out I could, enjoyed it because I got to play characters. Um, after finishing school, I uh, worked for a company for a little while and I met some other actors uh, and we became very good friends. And as grownups, we decided uh, one thing that would be fun is to go into schools and teach literature and history using theater plays. And so we formed a company uh, back in the 1900s, children. Uh, way back when, we have uh, formed a company and uh, we have told many, many stories over the years. Um, we've written our own plays about books that inspired us. And also um, this particular play, which we were thinking, what would be a fun story for a play? And there were lots of stories that had number three in them. And mm -hmm. so we thought, how interesting would it be to combine all the stories we know about the uh, number three into one play? And uh, so we had to find a way to connect them. And Goldilocks was the key. She was able to be in all the stories, even though she went from being Goldilocks to the big bad Goldilocks to eventually the right. Goldilocks. Oh, well, that's fun. Um, and how did you guys decide to use the Lego characters as actors? Well, I don't know if you can see behind me. I actually I can actually raise it a little bit. I'm a big fan. That's my little village up there on top of my bookshelf of books. Um, I'm a big fan of using uh, Lego and other okay. toys in storytelling. And um, normally I don't have Lego characters on stage. It's people. Uh, mm -hmm. We are in costume. We uh, do like to change hats and characters a lot. In fact, we did one play that involved each actor playing 25 characters each. Uh, it was about American history. So we like to change a lot, but because we were stuck at home, there was no way to uh, do our play in a way we thought that would be interesting to look at um, if it was everybody was in a different room. We, we've mm -hmm. been on these screens for so long. Um, so we thought, how fun would it be to do something like uh, an old paper theater, but I had Lego and that was a lot of fun to look at too. And, and so, I mean, come on, how many times have you played with Lego and you actually sure. have a fun story? So they they seem like a very good fit. In fact, Jonathan, yeah, my bears are still up here on the top shelf. Oh, great. Oh, there's Papa Bear right there. Oh, oh neat. I love his eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's adorable. Now, did you write the play yourself or was it written um, cumulatively as a group? So I worked originally with... Um, three actors, um, uh, one of them was in the production you saw today, Roderick. Um, and the, uh, so the three of us got together and we, we thought how many different ways could we tell this story just in practice? So we sat around a table for the first week of rehearsal. And I mean, at one time, uh, Goldilocks broke the video game systems. Uh, <laughs> one time we told the story in which um, they were uh, on different, they were in different kind of vehicles. So okay. they wrecked their truck. Um, so we tried, how can we tell it different? And then how can we tell the story the way we all know it? Because everyone knows the main parts, which is too mm -hmm. hot, too cold, just right. And uh, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, which my, right. has gone, my hair chin has gone down a bit. It was longer. Yeah. Than <laughs> but um, uh, so then we talked and came up with all kinds of fun ideas. And then I went home and uh, wrote out a play that went with some of the inspiration that they gave me. And then we uh, put it on the play, on the stage. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, um, when do you think you might be able to start um, having shows with real folks again um, in public? Do you guys have any time frame? Well, I have already done one play at a school uh, outside of Houston. It was uh, in Independence. Okay. Uh, and uh, But we had to do it in the gym, and everyone had to sit, 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 sit this is hard to say, tongue twister, <laughs> sit, six feet apart. So everyone oh, okay. was not. So the audience was really far apart and we were sure. really tired. Uh, I've done one show in a park where we were outside. Okay. Uh, and then um, I've done a couple of times where I've got I'm, uh, got to be on a stage, but the children, are, they had a video camera on the stage. And that's very mm -hmm. difficult to do because it's just not as interesting as a TV show when you're on the stage with a camera. Um, sure. people, people are tired of looking at people on screen some. So, Hopefully, when school starts again, we will be invited into more schools. I'm looking forward Definitely. to that. Uh, we do 
have a situation that we ask actors to come on stage with us all the time. You may have heard mm-hmm. the characters asking like, what can I build this house out of? Normally in the play, the audience tells us what they could put the sticks together with. So it could be glue, okay. chewing gum. Um, sometimes they, they tell us ridiculous things like slime. And we sure. have to make it on the stage and pretend and then put it together in the show. So mm-hmm. we still want to be able to use people, but not everyone is allowed to come up onto the stage. So we have to find sure. being safe doing that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, is there any book that you've always wanted to turn into a stage play that you haven't been able to, or that maybe you're thinking about in the future? Well, there are lots of plays, I'm sorry, lots of books that movies have been made of, mm-hmm. uh, but they're newer books. And so we have usually picked books that are over a hundred years old. Okay. Um, we've done the story of Don Quixote. We've done the story of, um, Robin Hood. So stories that we are allowed to do, but we don't know the author. So uh-huh. There's no way. Um, I would love to do uh, Lord of the Rings, but that would be my own adaptation, and I would not be allowed to do that. Probably <laughs> I have to get the permission from someone. So usually we just take the shortcut of picking books that people like and have known for over a hundred years. Okay. And put those on history. Also, we do um, history plays. Oh, um, great! We always base the history play if we can on the writings of the person we base them on. So. We've done a story about George Washington Carver. Um, we have um, done a history of the United States. So it's uh, we have people's own words about what happened. And so we, we try to perform our history plays from the point of view of the people who are who actually lived them. Oh, that sounds awesome. And we have to read a lot to do that. Lots of I would think, yeah, you really need to understand the characters. Um, speaking of reading, um, I was wondering if you have any books that you would recommend to young readers. Uh, that they may not have noticed or any themes they can look up or anything like that? Well, for young readers, I, my favorite book has always been The Giving Tree. Mm-hmm. I love The Giving Tree. I also love The Monster at the End of the Book. With um, those, are, those are very big books, though. Those are very short books. Grover, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah. That one's just always, it's fun to read out loud. In fact, uh-huh. actually, I used to read um, comics or com- comic strips or um, short books like that out loud to my family, which may be one reason I ended up being on stage acting because I would, it's fun to do the voices. Sure. It's, to read out loud. it's a different experience to read a book out loud mm-hmm. than to read it in your mind. You can hear everything in your mind, but when you have to make those sounds yourself, it makes it kind of, uh, kind of fun. I also love Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I, sure. I, I have to confess though, I didn't read Winnie the Pooh until I was an adult. Oh, wow. Okay. I fell in love with it. I always thought, oh, that's too young for me, even when I was a kid. Uh-huh. But after I read it, I found that the characters in Winnie the Pooh were just the best. So that's that's a big mm-hmm. favorite of mine. And then anything with pirates. Pirates. Yeah, you can't beat pirates, right? I love pirate stories. Well, I think we are about out of time, Rob. I want to thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your work with us. And um, where can anyone in the audience look up more information about your group if they would like to well we work with young audiences la, 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 la. So, uh, <laughs> young audiences of houston um, um and they uh they are the ones who um get us into the schools uh would not be able to do that without their help so they are very helpful of uh, finding ways and finding schools for us to be in or also um other places like the library and uh even occasionally a park you might find us in so young audiences of houston you can also um See us on Facebook and uh, just look up um, IACT Houston um, or Interact Houston. Perfect. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. And I appreciate all of you guys who uh, watch the shows today. I hope you enjoyed that. And maybe even, you know, I'd love to hear your stories that you come up with. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Cheerio. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Have a great day.